You spend a whole day at the rest houses. Everyone gives you the same story. The chieftain just shut himself in his great hall and closed the gates. There are a lot of wounded people in here. Oh, that's Alette. There were there are a lot of wounded people in here, adds Alette. We could help them. Eagle pulls you aside. I I followed the outside of the city walls, he says, and there's a water passage we could squeeze through, I think. Not the whole caravan. But if a handful of us get in, we might open the gates from the inside. The rest house is overflowing with refugees, the sick and the wounded, and noise. Tend to the wounded? Alette and Oddleaf spend the day along with others in your caravan treating the wounds, most of which came from the archers at the gates. I, I overheard I overheard from one woman that the city has been sending carts with food around, all of Oddleaf tells you. Could be a way in, Ivor suggests. Next time they send a cart, we'll bring it back in, Oddleaf protests. Aside from leading to a fight, it would probably mean no more food for the refugees. Leave the food cart alone. I don't want to get involved if others are going to suffer for it, you say. You return to what you were doing. Check out the water passage. I'm not fitting through there, says Ivor, when he, you arrive at the narrow ducks. Go without me. It looks like it'll get you on top of the walls and then down to the gate where you can open it. Wait for us at the gate, Ivor. We'll be quick. When Eagle said water, you should have guessed runoff. That means poop. Poop water. Still, you manage to squeeze your way through the tight stonework and force your way past an iron gate grate. You take stairs to the top of the walls. As you, as you approach the gates, armed men take notice. They don't ask questions. Let's be honest here. This is a horrible, horrible idea. But the game is telling me my only option here. option is to take the gates. Oh look, there's a lady over here. I assume that's a lady. And a young man with a beard. They're just chilling and watching. Yes, I know we're all unhappy about this situation. Oh, I didn't realize he was fighting. My bad. Still. Oh, that's an archer. Okay. Archer soon.
I didn't want to do this. Well, you should have said so, Alette. I would have listened to ya. I know this turn makes us into bandits. I am not okay with this. I really don't see what choice we have here. The game says we have to do this, so this is what we're doing. Who's our enemy again? Um... Good job. Good job, um, Hogan and Mogan. Dang it. 
well. Hudleaf and Bogan. All right. Injured. 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 Not unexpected. What in the dips are you doing? <laughs> His eyes twitching. What in What in the depths are you doing? <coughs> Letting ourselves in? I see that. I'm very impressed. But are all those people you just let in here? But all those people you ju just let in here? Dead. All those women and children with you? Dead. And thanks for killing the only ones holding this place together, Skull. What are you talking about? The man orders his guards to get the doors closed again before more refugees notice. If I knew there were fighters and a varl outside, I would have brought you in. I'm Eckel, and I'm in charge here. Have you heard about the chieftain? We heard he's hiding out in the Great Hall. Oh, really? I think you mean hiding out in a grave. He's eating worms, if that wasn't clear. What happened in here? As soon as they heard Dredge were coming, anyone who couldn't swing an axe got one to the head. That's the short story, anyway. At least three clans in here warring over turf and food, and the worst are the godforsaken Varl. The giants? He eyes Ivor and shrugs with exaggeration as if simply stating the obvious. We're in more danger here than out there. Look, I was in charge here before things went to crap. You've got some people who can fight, you've got your own Varl, that counts for something. I can keep your flock safe in the Great Hall, you fight for me. And to take back Frostveller. I don't take sides, too hard to tell when the good guys have become the bad. Fine, cut these sheep loose and watch your own asses, what do I care? All I want to do right now is to get out of this damn streets. Think carefully about what you want. We cannot stay here. This is a horrible, horrible idea. I don't know if that's... Eskel has already shouted to his men who sta stare daggers in return. They had just finished closing the massive doors. A fine waste of time and lives. Now get out! You pass again through the gates of Frostfeller. You wonder if you just threw away your best chance for survival. I hope you know what you're doing. Or we. I hope we know what we're doing. Making up as we go, Ivor. Whew! I'm certain that is not what the game developers wanted me to do. But I gotta be honest, that, that's a bunch of no. <sighs> hey, cons, the... Hey, con, we're back. I was able to get about as many warriors from Strand as you wanted, and more weapons. Extra supplies, too. You perk up, just now realizing Moger has been talking to you. Since Wagner died, everyone has been looking to you to make decisions. It's exhausting. Hey, Khan. I heard ya. Oh, right. I, I was saying the Varl we sent to the Strand have returned. The governor gave us most of what we wanted. That's good enough. Much resistance from the governor? Some. I don't think he was happy about us buying his fighters using his own money. He also insisted we take on a lackey of his to watch over his property. A man named Eric. Eric? Oh, I've met him. He seemed competent enough. 
Regardless, the governor will have to get over it unless he wants the dredge crawling through his streets. We've put down every slag that has wandered through while you were gone. Enough flapping your mouths, then! You're sure that that wound has healed, Luden? I agree. Even enough has already gone wrong. If something happens to the prince on a mission of peace, the alliance would rot. I mean, our prince already died in an alliance of peace, but you know, if both of you die, we're kind of, uh, S.O.L., as we Scrivener say. Or worse. Well, Luden makes his own decisions. We would have made fun. We would only be made to do this again later, and I will not suffer it all a second time. Either take us through the wandering road, or do your job and slaughter some dredge. What does that have? What? Luden abruptly turns with a scowl. He stamps back to his ring of tents and followers. Wandering road's not an option with this many. I could crush that boy's skull with one hand. If Luden won't be deterred, you'll have to deal with it. Don't let Luden get to you. After all, he's just a little flea. His lifespan is, what, a week? Let's go. I'm sick of looking at this dump. What do I tell the warriors, Hakon? Clid? Tell them to be cautious. No more losses. Will do. Give the word and we'll set off. I'm doing this accent because it's a lot easier for me to do because I grew up speaking like this. Not like this specifically, but more like this, because, you know, Oklahoma. Well, that's not exactly true either. I grew up with a fairly Midwestern accent. I'd ask with how you're dealing with Wagner's death, but I already know the answer. Isn't that right, Harvey? Just sitting over there licking your leg, making squelching noises. Do ya? Steady old Magner, Mogger, which is good. I know most of these Varl, but they're not under my command. They came to follow Wagner. You want the truth? I wouldn't want to be in your position either. Uh, uh. Anything you can tell me about the caravan? Throw together this many varl, half of them want to hit each other, and the rest want to be left alone. Anyone I should keep an eye on? There's a couple of clan leaders trying to show off for one each other. For one another. Not a big deal. I've got it under control. The fighters we just got from Strand ain't bad, but they're unruly. <laughs> Give it a few days back in Oklahoma, we would have said them fighters ain't so scrappy, but they're kind of headstrong. Well, I would have said that. I don't know if my friends from Texas would have said that. Probably would have said something silly. And my friend from uh, Texas A&M supporter, he probably would have said the most country thing that I can't even imagine. And there are more, a few, wait, what? And there are a few moaning about fighting for you instead of Wagner. Those are the ones to worry about. What about Luden's men? They don't want to hear nothing from me, I know that. Any problems? Could be. Luden's pet Varl is named Bercy. Bercy? Bercy. I'm not sure where he came from or what his deal is. Bastard knows how to fight, but there's something I don't like about him. He ain't good people. That's what I'm trying to say. His girl in red is scary, too. 
Isra. She's probably the best fighter Luden's got, to be honest. I've overheard some of the Varl call her the witch. Why? The flame and arrows, I think. It's a good trick, but the fire upsets our Varl more than the dredge. Still don't make much sense. Witch? They're not scholars, Harkin. I think they're mostly just afraid of her. That makes more sense. Don't let her find out. Too late. Haven't you ever wanted to be in command? More than I am? Shoot. Any more rope and I'd hang myself. I doubt that. This is probably very annoying for everybody to listen to. I forget. You weren't around back then. At one point, I had more rope. I hung myself. So no, I'm not interested in command. It's all yours. Thanks. You think we're walking into a death trap? This many varl? No, we should be fine. Things could get pretty rough, though. I don't like being the one to send varl to their deaths. I like worrying about myself, and that's the extent of it. Who would have expected Wagner to drop like that in a cup to a couple of slag? Yes, who would have? I'm still wondering what happened. He had hundreds of dead slag to his name. I don't get it. Just happens sometimes. No big moment. I'm sure it surprised him even more than us. Oh, I'm sure it did. Although, I have to wonder. No, never mind. Anyway, I'll worry about them warriors. You worry about not doing something stupid. Dumbass. I mean... <clears throat> That's asking a lot. What you holding back about Wagner? I'd rather not say, Harkon. Hagon. Why not? Because Wagner made the wonderful, wonderful ballet. Stunning. But he was kind of a crap person. I mean, <clears throat> it's the kind of thing that gets stuck in your... It's the kind of thing that gets stuck in your head and you'd need a clear one. It's better if you let me worry about it. If you say so, it sounds important, tell me, how did Wagner die? He ran into Dredge, wasn't expecting it. I'm an idiot. When we found him, he was flying face down like he was struck from behind. Did he really get taken down by some random slag? Who else was there? You think, Luden. He probably didn't, but... Damn it, we should keep an eye on that bastard. If you see anything else, tell me. I will. Let's get back to it, then. Let me know if you need anything else. I will. But honestly, it is so relaxing to talk like that again. You knew him well, didn't you? Wagner? No. I mean, well, I don't know. I remember him. Always rushing around with some important business, but I never really knew him. Not, never got a chance to talk much. Longer than I did, in any case. I suppose so. When he spoke, Varl listened. I knew that. Well, I mean, he was the prince. I could use help there. The Scrivener leans back, considering the sentiment. I've seen worse. They respect you for your ability to swing an axe. They need to respect you for your actions. But you're not talking to the right Varl. Mogner's got, or Mogner's got some skill there. Most I can do is hold a quill. What you always put down in that journal? How do you mean? What do I write? I write what happens. They've got a banner in Arburg for that, you know. Oh, you mean the long banner? Yes. The Menders wove up something that writes its own history. You want my opinion? I don't trust it. No. It tells a broad story. 
I think there's some value in the narrow. Whose story does it write? Mine? Theirs? Luden's? God forbid. Ha, huh, you relic. The god's been dead a long time. Oh, have they? Oh, have they? Old habits, I suppose. I heard you was a terror in your day. Do you know how old I am? Dare I ask? I'm competing, you know. Nobody knows how old we Varl can get, naturally. There's one by the name of Snorri. He's got a few years on me. Just hunkers in Grolfheim collecting rhyme. Bastard might actually beat me. Another one named Krumer is close, I think, but the addled son of a bitch still welcomes a fight. He'll probably be offed before I am. Although, the Scrivener gestures around him as if to remind you of the current situation. You chuckle. Anyway, the point is, what difference does it make? I'm just a delivery baron for the Yorunderar. You're under now. I'm just the delivery barn for the Yorunder now. Can't remember half what I've done. Hence the journal. Hence. Don't get fancy on my behalf, Harkin. <laughs> okay, I won't. Do you suppose what happened to the sun? Gods, how should I know? Never seen something like this before. Are you worried? Some of the Varl in the caravan think the world's coming to an end. Others think it's the best thing that could happen. No more black months. I'll take it. If it's the end, I'm ready. What about the rest of us? To the depths with you. Ha! Get some rest. Always more marching to do. I've hoofed more hills than a horse born with a grudge. Don't worry about me. All right, I am going to leave it here for this week's uh, episodes of the Banner Saga. I am still loving this game. I am not loving the voices that I'm coming up with, so I'll have to think hard about that. Um, I don't know. I really like the idea of the stories that they're telling. I mean, there's an A side and a B side, but the A and B side have their own mini sides. So, I mean, there's an A story and a B story, and then the A story and B stories have sub-stories that focus on the characters telling the story. Hi, Harvey. Um, and, I mean, that that's good storytelling, frankly. I like that storytelling. It keeps things interesting. You're seeing two different sides to the same scenario. As for Rook and Let's story, maybe I just made the wrong decisions, but that whole scenario was wrong. I mean, what do you do? What do you do when, the, when you have a situation where you have to try to save as many people as possible? I suppose the true answer to that would be, I don't have to save as many people as possible. I have to save me and mine. That's the very American, Midwestern, survivalist approach that, that we would take here and now. If the a zombie apocalypse happened tonight, me and my stepdad, we'd be taking care of us. Or at least he'd be taking care of us, and I'd be saying, okay zombies, it's time to eat me. I'm just going to end up being a burden, because that's exactly what I'd be. Um, I would ultimately be fighting for trying to save as many people as possible, because that's my personality. In this world that they've set up, Rook and Alette are also trying for those same things. Try to save as many people as possible. You're not trying to save yourself and your, immediately your immediate blood kin. You're trying to save 
your relatives. You're trying to save your community. And that isn't something that a lot of the independent survivalists really seem to get. It's not about the bunker. It's about you getting into the bunker. There's another game, actually, that does a, a, what I think is a great job illustrating that point. Um, it's called Survivalist, and I, if I remember, I'll, I'll play it, because I really like that game. And I never finish it. I get to about halfway through, and I'm like, okay, it's time for me to end, because I'm going to stop enjoying it soon. Because then I'm going to see the characters I like die. Anyway, um... So that's where Rook and Alette's story starts out. And then they have the options of do we save do we try to save as many as possible? We try to put as many people on our lifeboat with as much supplies as we can get and put ourselves in risks to get those supplies. Then we have the troublemaker on the road. What do we do with him? Is his life so important? In a survival scenario, theoretically, every single person is important. Because you're whittling down. The survival scenarios that I typically see and typically play, you're dealing with 10 people, 14 people, max. Not this 400 people nonsense. But, I mean... Now I'm thinking of Fallout, and Fallout, you know, you go into the bunkers and you see, oh, this, 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 uh, survivor, this shelter is supposed to, to save 200 people. Or house 200 people, but there's only 10 people that live here. That's gonna be enough to survive, right? No, no, it's not. That's gonna be a lot of interbreeding, a lot of fast. So anyway. Um, so with Raph, we have the, the one versus the many. Does his individual rights outweigh the rights and the survival of the others? I think the best option would have been to just kill him immediately. Except that that would have been so heartless and ruthless. That's a total... That is a totalitarian response that I don't want to do. And then we get to Frostfeller, and we're locked out. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at these people, and I'm, sitting, I'm thinking to myself, there's already 800 people outside the gates. There is no way there is enough su uh, supplies inside that town to feed an additional 800 mouths. No way in hell. Our best option is to run away. But of course the game says that I should try to try to take the town, hold the town, serve the evil warlord for as long as I have to in order to save my people. I don't know, maybe that is the correct decision from what that warlord said there were Varl in that town and from everything I've seen of the Varl on both sides of the story I would see Rook going to the Varl and making an alliance with them because they are the ones that are going to survive. As long as there's food, they will survive. So, what do I think is going to happen in the next episode? I have no idea, and I am eager to find out, because I love the way that they are telling this story. Um, I want the gods to be alive. I want this to be a happening after Ragnarok. Because that's the feel that they have going here. We have... What is it? The Sons of Baldur? that appeared in God of War. Mug... Hoden... Hoden Dolor Brinder. Brinder, brother.
anyway, we ha we have the, the the twin sons of Balder, supposedly, maybe. We have uh, Magdi and S oh, what's one of the wolves has swallowed the sun. Maybe the other wolf has swallowed the moon. We don't know. They've never mentioned it, except that there was that line that said that there was the sun in the sky. Except the sun is gone. It's just diffuse light. And that's always one of those things. Whenever you read the Epic Edda, which is the... The Epic Edda is the collection of original uh, stories that we think, and this is what we base the Norse mythology on this single set of stories, because there are no other stories. There is the oral tradition of Sweden, the uh, Kalevala, which is a beautiful piece of work. It, it's, it is immense, it is complex, and it is beautiful. Uh, it has a, the Kalevala suite has its own opera and it has a beautiful tarot cards it has beautiful um, stained glass and it's all collections of oral stories told in Sweden about their own native gods um, however that's that's not Norse uh, and then <laughs> it could be though there I mean, if a close reading of, of the Kalevala and of the epic poet, uh, poet, the epic Edda, you see where there could be crossover. The stories of the epic Edda were written roughly 1100s to 1300s, and they were written down by Christian monks you know, inserting their own points of view into that set of stories. And then you have the Kalevala, which was collected in the 30s, I think, 1930s. Um, a, a research fellow and his team scoured the countryside of Sweden with tape recorders and just tried to get as many stories as they could, and then they wrote down the common elements of those stories, and that is the Kalevala. And they admit that, you know, different regions and different areas have their own interpretations of that story, and that's not wrong. This is just the most agreed-upon version of events. Lemminkainen is born out of the water and he's an old man immediately. That is common upon, upon all of the stories, but, you know, where he was born, what he was wearing, what he said, that is not so common. And so they just go with uh, the most agreed upon version of events in the Kalevala. That is not true for the Poetic Edda. Um, so. I brought up the Kalevala because if you read the Poetic Edda and then you go and read the Kalevala, the Kalevala talks about things after Ragnarok. It doesn't say that at any point in time. Does it say, after Ragnarok, these things happen? But the world that it builds, if you look at it, and you said, if Ragnarok happened, what would be left? And you look at the world of the Kalevala, it looks like what I would expect. There is Loki. Loki survives, but he is a tricksy bastard. So he's changed. He is no longer Loki, the web, the weaver of lies, the net weaver, the trickster. Loki, Loki, is now the Lady of the North, who holds the uh, ever-turning. Oh, what is it? It's um, it's a it's a mill that whenever she mills, whatever she wants comes out. 
So it can be 10 gallons of mead, it can be wheat, it can be fish, it can be a thousand arrows. Whatever she wants, she tw twists her mill and that's what pops out. Um, there's a specific word for what it is and I don't remember what it is, but I just remember that's what it was because I looked it up once. Okay, I'm going off on a, on, a, on a totally unrelated tangent. So, but if I take those things and I put them together and I look at this world that the Banner Saga is showing me, I see the interconnectedness of that. I can see th this being a transition between the Epic Poeta and the Kalevala. And that is just beautiful. And I can see that doubly so because of the art style that they are uh, using here. This beautiful, uh, clear, crisp lines that's inspired by um, the Nordic, Celtic style. I know that's a specific style, but I'm not an art person. I'm a literary person, so I don't know the name of it. Sorry, if you know the name of that, tell me, because it's a beautiful style, the runic style. Um, and of course, runes... Well, those are just totally made up. <laughs> Somebody had a fever dream, and he said, I don't know what the runes were, but these came to me in my fever dream, and that's how Odin got the runes in the first place, so let's go for it. These are the runes now. Uh, and if that's not true, well, that's what I, I read whenever I got my rune set. And I, they, I read the history of it because there's a book that comes with the runes and it says, where do these come from? How do we know what they mean? And it said, we don't. This guy just made it up. And we went with it because it's awesome. So maybe my book was a liar. I don't know. I wonder if I still have that book. Says the person with 15 crates of books and storage. Anyway, I've said that I need to get back on point a few times now. I'm loving this game. I want the gods to be alive. I want the characters to become gods. I want to know what's happening with the dredge. Why are they coming back? What happened to them? I want there to be a dredge storyline where we can see the Prince of Darkness and he can be like, more dread! I didn't order these shoes. I ordered different shoes. They're almost the same, but their toes are, are beveled instead of swiveled. I don't know. So I, I want that, but I don't think I'm going to get that in, in this one. I might get that in Banner Saga, too. I hope so. Um, so, yeah. Thank you once again for joining me for the Banner Saga. Thank you for listening to me ramble on and on and on about... Um, things. I will include links in the description below about the Kalevala, uh, about the Epic Edda, and things of that nature, because it's interesting to me. And it has to be interesting to me. I spent four years studying it with an additional two years optional. So I love it. It is beautiful. And I, I am so happy that Stoic uh, bothered to put in the time to get it right. To make one person who has studied Norse mythology and to have studied uh, Swedish mythology and Irish legends and mythology, to make someone who, who has basically studied this, this area and this set of stories very happy. So thank you, Stoic, for doing that. Um, I will, uh, okay, this is the last time I'm saying it. Thank you for joining me for the Vana Saga. We'll join us again next week where we pick up this story. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. You can hit me up on Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. I am Twitch broadcasting on Saturdays for my alternate uh, playthrough of Dark Sun Shattered Lands, um, and I will be broadcasting periodically throughout the week as I get stuff to broadcast. And 
I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.